We're going to be talking about pollinators right now, one of the hottest topics in the garden. I'm joined by Drake White from San Antonio. She's with the Nectar Bar. Yes. And again, this is a topic that the, everywhere I go, people are on fire for <laughs> gardening for, for pollinators and butterflies. Tell me how your passion got started. Well, it really got started with an herb garden. So okay. it was kind of going out clipping here and there and discovered some little worms on mm. it. And I okay. asked a neighbor, hey, what are these? And she was like, well, you can, you know, get rid of them with this and that. I didn't want to kill it. Yeah. So <laughs> I wanted like, to find out. And I know, just did find it. out what this is yeah. before I kill it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I just found out um, what it was. It ended up being a black swallowtail on my fennel. Okay. Um, the and the obsession just began. <laughs> I just completely got obsessed after one bug butterfly to the next um, mm -hmm. and started creating habitats yeah. in my own yard and then decided, you know what, this is a need that other people should yeah. have. Part of your business is educational, is educational mm -hmm. but you also have a small nursery. Yes. Okay. But to, what are, when people come in, what are the big questions they really need to answer? Well, one is understanding about host plants and nectar plants. A lot of people don't know what that is. So mm -hmm. um, you need to have both. First, the host plant is adult food or mm -hmm. uh, baby food, actually. Okay, um, right, right. So like the baby in your garden. Exactly. So the host plants are needed where the mom can lay the eggs and the caterpillar hatches and eat the plants. Now, if you have the nectar plants, which are the adult food, mm -hmm. um, that is the one that will kind of give the um, adult her food. She'll lay her eggs and continue throughout the habitat. Right. It also provides shelter um, for the eggs and caterpillars from predators right. as well. Sometimes you get a double bonus because some host plants are also nectar plants as yeah. well. For the baby food, mm -hmm. for the plants that the little babies are munching on, that's okay. Yes. Let them munch. Absolutely. That's what it's <laughs> there for. Um, we have to have both. So mm -hmm. um, you just make sure you create a nice, thick, lush area, habitat mm -hmm. for them, and you won't see it as munched. This is such a huge topic right now. Why do you think that it's the case? Well, one of it is with the our, what we call our gateway butterfly, the monarch. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, the gateway. It's, yeah, it's the gateway <laughs> insect for for. Um, kind of learning to, to conserve. Right. Um, their numbers have gone down, so mm -hmm. it's partly because of our faults um, yeah. eradicating their food sources. So not using pesticides also, um, and then just putting back into the habitat. We're taking away, if we could just put back in, mm -hmm. um, what's being taken away, then we can actually help um, increase the numbers and when we talk about that it's not just you know if one butterfly is going there's are going to be several types of butterflies sure as well as different bees and native bees um, mm -hmm. and things like that are, that we don't even think about being pollinators hummingbirds for an example oh, yeah. are also a pollinator so right, right. these are important ways and that's kind of what sparks it to people they learn about one and it's kind of like the same with me I learned about one and then here I am just yeah. I couldn't stop learning because yeah. once you know, you, you get that hook and it gets you. <laughs> and, and you're right, when you plant for one and then the, it's like a party being thrown for a bunch. Absolutely, <laughs> it absolutely is. And it's not just the party just for the the one, you have everything, you yeah. know, so everything just kind of move in. It's a whole little ecosystem mm -hmm. and you can do it in, in any, in your own backyard, even if you don't have a backyard container gardening. But a yeah. lot of people don't believe that you can, but you can have a very diverse ecosystem sitting on your patio as well. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And you'll be amazed what stops by for a visit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep, have your morning coffee and watch yeah, the right. hummingbirds too. Right. So let's talk about some of the, your favorite plants to include that kind of fill the roles that you've been describing. Um, so some of the favorite ones, definitely mist flowers, any type of oh. kind. So <laughs> that's, that's one very happy plant. Yes put for any type of pollinator. Mm -hmm. um, they love it, it'll be filled with anything. Um, and you have, if you get, there's several different types. And mm -hmm. any type that you get, you'll have blooms all, all year round till we get our right. first freeze. Right. Um, and then also uh, flame acanthus. Mm -hmm. And flame acanthus, it's a host plant and a nectar plant. Mm -hmm. And hummingbirds just absolutely love it as well. Yeah. Coneflowers, cowpen daisies, things mm -hmm. that are host plant and nectar plant just kind of put together. Okay. Um, on the flame canthus, I'm just curious, which of the butterflies are attracted to that? And um, other so pollinators? the um, the two that it's used as a host plant is the uh, Texan crescent and also the crimson patch. Those are okay. two butters, yeah. butterflies that use them as host plants. So mm -hmm. if you see the little caterpillars on there, it's okay. It's meant to okay. be that that way. All right. So and when you're when you're educating people and, and teaching them, or even installing a garden for folks. 
Um, the soil conditions in the, for, for uh, the plants that we've talked about as a group, is there kind of a preferred range for those plants? Well, when you're, especially when you're talking about native plants, you have to understand what soils you're working with. So mm -hmm. in San Antonio, we have four different ecoregions. So depending where you're at in town, of course, yeah. um, something that's going to grow up near the um, Edwards Plateau is not going to grow somewhere that's in a sandy soil or black land prairie. Right. So it's just understanding where you're actually at, um, whether you're in San Antonio or you're in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, native plants are going to be working best for your area and finding out what those are. I educate folks everywhere on, on what they have and what mm -hmm. would work best. When I'm thinking about the plants that you talked about, almost all of those would perform well together, I think. Yes. They could do it with some dappled shade, but they really would prefer sun. Yes, they do prefer sun. Um, they would do some dappled shade. Uh, for example, everyone almost knows of the antelope horn, the beautiful... Yeah, right. When you drive down the, the highways yeah. and you see them down on, along the medians. And it does want sun, but it does work in dappled shade as well. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand the soil that it likes and also understanding how to kind of grow it um, or mm -hmm. literally talk to your plants tell them how pretty they are <laughs> and, <laughs> well, they and are that's pretty. kind of yeah. all you have to do because native plants don't like to be babied and one of the biggest mistakes uh, that people yes, make true. is baby them and over watering mm -hmm. so now that doesn't mean you don't have to ever water but once you have them established right. then they definitely um, need to just be talked to and, yeah. and reminded how beautiful they are <laughs> a good deep watering once a week really will carry yes. through for most most of the species exactly. we're talking about. Exactly. Even in our hot heat that we're dealing with right. now, I actually um, had just put up some things about, you know, it's like 500 degrees outside. Right. Um, and it's still, we're having blooms. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, this is what it's meant for. It's our plants here yeah. are used to what we get, whether we get rain yeah. or not. I started using a, some bit of advice I learned from a guest on the show in terms of how to recommend watering in, the, in, in our heat and in, in our summertime temperatures which were so brutal this past summer. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, if it's wilted in the morning mm -hmm. and looking tired in the morning, that's a good time to water. That's a perfect time to but water. If you see it's wilting in the afternoon, I would leave it all alone. plants would wilt yes, in the afternoon. Yes, I wilt in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. So don't get too upset about that. Exactly. Um, and it will tell you when it needs a drink. And if there's nothing wrong, don't water yeah. it. Yeah. So, so tell me, I know that you're involved in educational activities. Yes. Fe and there's a, a festival coming up that yes. you're involved with. Just the, tell me about that. The uh, Monarch Butterfly and Pollinator Festival. Mm -hmm. It is October 20th this year. Um, I am chief docent for that festival Good and what we you. do is we basically get volunteers together they are trained on how to tag why we tag and then we go out into the crowd that day and we actually teach them how to tag and release the butterflies um, this way they understand the importance of the citizen science sure. and what goes into it because monarchs are the only butterfly that we are aware of um, that do a two-way migration yeah, just like birds. Yep. Yeah, right. So all the way from Mexico to Canada and back. So okay. pretty unique. Well, it's very unique yes. and uh, you are a great spokesperson for this uh, whole movement that's afoot here in not just Central Texas but all across the country. Yes. And it, it's so gratifying to know that people are taking citizen science and ecological responsibility into their own hands and are doing something that may save these species. So it's really cool. Yes, it's really cool because it saves everything around, not yep. just the butterflies. It it really does tie everything in and we get um, a good result from it. All right. Well, Drake, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for coming up from Thank San Antonio. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, you're most welcome. And coming up next is our friend Jim Thomas. Thank you.